2013, 12 models from across Africa. A one-year modeling contract with New York-based modeling agency, DNA Model Management. And 50,000 US dollars had cash. These, in part, are the prizes that Amita Stacy walked away with after winning Africa's Next Top Model in 2014. We have her on the style project today because we're talking modeling as a career. My name is Sylvia Wari and you're watching the Style Project, brought to you by Vaseline. And joined yet again by Solomon Tazabon, who is the fashion editor of the African Woman magazine and personal and celebrity stylist. Welcome, Solomon. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. Because we're talking modeling today, we are joined by two very special guests. Joram Job Muzira, who is creative director of the Jora Model Management. Welcome, Jora. Thank you so much, Sylvia, for hosting me, and I feel so much humbled being on the Style Project tonight. And our very special guest. Guys, we are so excited to have Amito Laguna. She's in the house. Thank you so much, Sylvia. It's always, I watch this show all the time. So I'm here today, so yay. Yes, guys. <laughs> We have our superstar. A little bit of background on modeling. The very first modeling agency in Uganda was set up in 2000 and it was called Zyper Modeling Agency. And for me, it has been like basically my dream was to get a girl and take them to the international world to be, to represent Uganda on the international catwalks. I tried, I tried for many years. I started off uh, in 2003 when I took um, Barbara Asia, who was a runner up at Miss Uganda. I took her to London, I took her to Paris. We went you know, to all over Europe. We went to modeling agencies and the problem was, they just, they were all, we were rejected, we were turned down. They said, oh, you're not too tall, you're not tall enough and you look like somebody famous to you. You remember Barbara here? Yeah. They said she looked like a leg work. Yeah. The next person I took up uh, modeling was uh, Priscilla Ray. We failed. They said, "Oh, you don't, you know, her facial features were not right. She was not tall enough. She didn't. She was not the right color." And you know, I did not totally ever give up on on on, on the modeling, but I always had hope that one day we're gonna have you know it was a, a dream to have one day to have somebody come out of uganda and be on the runway and at least this is happening in my time okay. and <laughs> <laughs> what's your secret <laughs> Uh, well, I think it's just uh, persistence and I mean I used to watch Silver when I was a child and look at the newspapers and I wanted to be that. Um, I tried my best. I went for this audition in Nairobi that took me 16 hours on a bus and from Nairobi I went to Cape Town and from Cape Town to New York and then from there everything, you know, the rest is history. But um, yeah, persistence is one of them. That's my secret. And I also pray. There are so many people that want to be models. Every day, yeah. we literally have more than 500 have requests. Like, yeah. Yeah. I want to be a model. I want to be, you know. So we have walk-ins like on a daily basis. On a daily on a basis, basis, but only very few make it. You have to have a personality that everybody will remember. When you walk into the room and say, hi, my name is Amito. And then all the casting directors remember, you know, that I mean, to girl, I think I like her. You know, something about her, I don't know what it is, but I like her. You know, you have to have that kind of personality, either bubbly or charming or sweet, whatever that it is, whatever makes you stand out. The last year has just been crazy. I, know. I mean, I am on my Facebook and my Instagram, I'm following this girl, and I'm like, damn it, she stole my life. <laughs> I, was, I was supposed to have been that, you know, because for me, I always say I, it's part, it's been part of my dream yeah. to be a model, but I just realized I wasn't tall enough. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think you could do. You're very. You have a very beautiful face. You could do. Uh, <laughs> you could do lots of commercials, and commercial girls make a lot of money. You know, they make so much money. Um, I'm. More than the well, <laughs> we make more money. Okay? <laughs> I'm kidding, but like commercial girls make. Usually, they make sometimes faster money than the, the high fashion models, you know, because they always have jobs here and there, e-commerce, there's always H&M producing clothes, all these brands producing fresh clothes every other season. Oh, she actually sounds like a pro at this, she could be like a casting manager or something. What, what is this shoe? What is this shoe? Um, advertising for a, par a French brand called Kenzo, it's very popular, they have very um, luxurious clothes, so I was very honoured to do the, the shoot alone, you know, when you're fresh face, they usually don't make you do shoots alone, they usually get somebody who's been there, so you do the shoot together, but I actually did uh, this campaign by myself, so it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Out of all the campaigns, okay, first of all, <laughs> I, this I have to say that she is a Ugandan model, Yes. she is an international model, Yes. and Amito is one of the first models in the world to have been a new face and then booked in all the shows during a fashion week. Yeah. London, New York, Paris, Milan. Yeah. You met history. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jerome, what, what were you thinking? I was overjoyed. It was more like a miracle. Even Oluchi herself couldn't believe it. When she opened for Balenciaga. I first saw Amito on the row. Yeah, yeah, I did the row. It's the amazing, and right? Like, and I opened the row. It was... Okay, yeah. this is not happening. <laughs> Someone pinch yeah. me right now. Yeah. <laughs> it was so surreal. Yeah, it's like, it was surreal for me as well. Yes. Uh, you're now an inspiration to a lot of kids in Uganda. Mm -hmm. For many years, for me, it's up to it's take it this 2015 years mm -hmm. for us to actually be as Uganda as a country to realize we have an, an international representatives on the runway. Mm -hmm. What advice are you giving to these kids? I mean how can they be able to make it how can they be you how can they make it on the runways of paris in new yeah. york you know the thing with me is that i do my research quite well i uh, when i found when i got interested in, in fashion i would follow all the brands i would follow the photographers the casting directors and i did my research and i so if you're out there and you want to do uh, modeling or whatever that you want to do it doesn't have to be modeling you can just take that extra step of following your dream because it's not gonna come and find you where you are you have to go towards it you have to walk towards your dream because we all have dreams you know yeah. so, what was your highlight for this last year because for us as African women uh, we were just well, we were we reposting we were putting making a lot of make a lot of noise because we were out here just yeah. screaming it's like but she she actually graced our very last uh, the cover of African yeah, women the magazine young yes. 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 Yeah. But I could say I do not have that one specific, you know, theme. My yeah. highlight is yeah. the runway where you had Kim Kardashian in the audience. Oh, that's Long Vang. Yeah, it's a huh? French brand. Long Vang. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some people call it Lanvin. Yes. Long Vang. Yes. <laughs> and also Lady Gaga posted a picture of you. Yay! Oh, <laughs> We actually had a very famous <laughs> selfie. Yes, uh, me and Lady Gaga had a selfie backstage. It was amazing. She came backstage and she was like, hi, you were so great on the runway. Let's take a picture. And I was like, what? Did you did you just ask me to take a picture? Did Wait. Lady Gaga Wait. just Wait. ask our very own I know, Gaga it was amazing, right? <laughs> So, Durham, yeah, what were you? <laughs> and Durham was here also screaming. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Posting, and Durham, what was your best moment? Can you see the, some of those runway, Amito on the runway? What were your um, favorite? I, I must say my favorite moment was when she opened for Valencia. Mm -hmm. Because it's been like forever for, for a black girl to open a show for a great designer like Balenciaga. And she's done very well. Right now I'm just waiting for her to probably book covers for all the different issues of Vogue, Vogue Italia, the American Vogue, Russian Vogue, and I pray that she also books the Victoria's secret fashion. Yes. yes. <laughs> but you know why? Uh, <laughs> let's hope. Let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The Victoria's secret is lingerie. You yeah, have to have a little. Yeah. You know what you told me before I left? You say, don't come back here if you don't do good. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the smile. This is the biggest smile I've ever had on the show, and I'm enjoying this show so much. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, 
will go deep into the modeling industry in Uganda. We'll get to meet some models in Uganda under the Jora Model Management, and Amito will tell us about her statistics. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. We are still talking modeling, modeling in Uganda. I mean, to tell us you about your statistics. What are your statistics? Well, uh, I'm 5'11 and a half, but because I've been doing a lot of Pilates and working out, I'm now 6. Made me a little taller. Really? Yeah. So should I do Pilates and yes, get taller? Yeah, do Pilates. They I make could... you a tiny little bit taller and more straight. You know? Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, my bust is 30. Four inches. My waist is 23 inches, and my hips 34 inches. So that's about the statistics that around there. Those are the statistics that yeah. they use internationally. They, yes, absolutely. And you being in that industry here for a while before mm -hmm. you 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 moved to New York. <laughs> When you look at the models locally, mm -hmm. do you think uh, we can get another Amito out there? Absolutely. We have so many gorgeous girls out here. Some of my friends are super gorgeous and I think they'll do so well in New York. You know, uh, we do have many models who have a lot of potential and who would be fantastic and great in New York. Yes, and fit the statistics, you know, yeah. Well, Joram, the task is all upon you now to get us the next Amito. Very, very easy. And I'm already on the hunt. Like I'm hunting, I'm scouting 24-7 because as much as season two is going to be coming for Africa's next top model, so if Oluchi happens to come to Uganda, I don't want to be embarrassed. We have to come this year. They have to come this year. Last year they only st <laughs> she stopped in Nairobi. Yeah, exactly. This year they definitely have to come because the winner comes from here. So I'm fighting so hard to see that we get another girl who follows Amita's footsteps. And I believe that girl is there. Trust me, she's there. In the Jura model management, mm -hmm. do you have hmm. <laughs> five, eleven, going six? Yeah, trust me, I do have lots of tall girls. Um, recently, we got one that is signed to Fusion Model Management in South Africa. It, it was more like a placement, yeah. so she's doing very well. She's called Akello Patricia, and shockingly, she is her cousin. She really. <laughs> it was exactly, she before. is her. Ex exactly, exactly. Oh, she's so it runs in the it runs in the blood. It runs in the blood. <laughs> but then, besides it running in the blood, there's so many gorgeous, stunning all beautiful girls that I believe that are going to represent Uganda amazingly well internationally. Uh, specifically, which model do you have that has the statistics that actually they're looking for? Um, they're like six girls that have the right stats to work internationally. Okay, you, one of them is there. She's called you have a platform. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, she's called Vankusha Lilia Asano and... Um, How tall is Vankusha? She's six. She sits without heels. She's even taller than Amito. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. She sits she's without heels. The statistics are perfect. Exactly. Yeah. So we're banking on her, plus the rest of the other girls, the six girls that I've mentioned about. So she has all the features that they look for internationally. Um, so she must want this so bad. Because sometimes the models have what it takes. They do have what it takes internationally. But then it depends on do they want it so bad. Because it's a very tough world. Sometimes, sometimes they'll give you that platform. Say she went to Nairobi, um, cast for Africa's Next Top Model, but then when she went to New York, she wanted it so, so bad. Because out there, it's a jungle. Everything doesn't come on a silver plate, so it comes back to the models. Besides them having the passion, zeal, and everything, they must want it so, so bad. That's mm -hmm. how the industry is, because the rejection is to die for. Not everyone is going <laughs> to like you. It's cutthroat. I know. Yes. <laughs> Into the male modeling. Okay, and then when it comes to the male models, internationally, most of the male models are above 5'11". Because they're way taller than the girls. Average, but somehow taller. 5'11 onwards. But in Uganda, I see that we don't have a lot of tall men. Exactly. That is very, very... Is it our culture? Is it our genes? Is it... Exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, it is what it is. But mainly you'll find that most of these tall girls are like, tall guys are up country. Um, and then they're not so much exposed to the industry. Because trust me, if you go to Gulu, Kitgum, all those northern Uganda, northern Uganda places, you'll find that there's a lot of potential. But then they don't have that zeal, that burning passion. They don't have that one person to mentor them, to, you know, push them to do this. That is why we have... I mean, average male models, but then the male models under my agency are to die for. They but are really, really good. With my experience in modeling all of these years, I've realized that even internationally, male models never do well. 
true. Because uh, there's I, been so very few. There's been uh, de probably yeah, Tyson and uh, Beckford. Yeah, Tyson yeah, Beckford. Yes, yes. He's the only one that has really, really made it very big. Yeah. Do you think we shall have like a male version of? I believe anything can happen because we have one called Zeta. He's over here. He's more like a replicate of Tyson Beckford. Oh, and yeah. he says that instead of him looking like Tyson Beckford, Tyson, 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 Tyson looks Beckford like looks like. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I absolutely agree. So I believe if he's given the right platform, because mm. here in Uganda the business is still growing, if we get the right platforms, if we have. Um, various fashion weeks, if we have so many magazines out there, if you have designers that are willing to invest in themselves and do lots of fashion shows, then most of these models will get that, you know, international recognition that they deserve. Models are all, not only runway models. True. There's like so many different types of models. So let us change and let's see other models. <laughs> yes, like everybody's so interested in modeling and it's not only about runway models. International corporate companies that are here are not using mo models, local models enough. They're using models from South Africa, from Kenya and stuff. That is job, they're taking jobs away from, uh, from basically models. What all of these companies are doing, they're like, oh, please bring your auntie. Yeah. They, 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 you, know, you have your sister and they're using that. And they're, they're not actually helping to promote the industry and yet people make money out of it. Mm -hmm. You don't, also, you don't only have to be a runway model, yeah. right? It's not yeah. right. True. Yeah, mm. true. So that is why you'll find that the industry is becoming more diversified. There's mm. like lots of different um, modelings. Mm. So you'll find that we have so many commercial models. That is why you'll find that most of the commercial models are the ones that parade themselves as models in Uganda. But then internationally, you'll find that they can't even dress anywhere. Mm. Okay? But then you'll find that still in Uganda, most of the money is in commercial modeling. Going back to our meetup. I want presents from Paris. The <laughs> <laughs> shoes didn't fit you. She has a pair of Manolo Blanis and <laughs> they didn't fit. They didn't fit me. Sorry. She has a seven thousand dollar Balenciaga bag. This is embarrassing. <laughs> this. I did, just disclaimer. I did not buy this bag. It was given to me free of charge. This is seven thousand dollars. <laughs> How many cars can you buy in Uganda? I, I did not buy Uganda. this bag with my own money. You know what? <laughs> Everybody should know that I did not purchase this bag with my own hard cash, okay? I think you got it because you opened the show. Yes, I got a couple of presents from opening the show. This dress as well, Balenciaga. So, yeah. Uh, free things, models, that's what we always do. So, I'm happy. <laughs> what is your final word? What would you like to say to the Ugandans, Ugandan girls that want to be like you? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Ganans, for supporting me. There's so many of you on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook who support me. Hi, Amito, thank you. We're proud of you. Thank you, everybody who's been there and, you know, who's proud of me. That, that keeps me going, you know. Uh, the kind of energy that you send out to me kind of keeps me going in New York. Even when I'm so homesick in Paris, I just see one of those messages and I'm like, oh, this, this, you know, let me just go and do something else and be better at whatever I'm doing. And yeah. Joram? I uh, call upon all the upcoming models, all the girls and boys out there that want to be models, you must want it so bad. Besides you having the qualities and everything, if you do not breathe, walk and eat this thing called modeling or fashion, then it's a no-no for you. Want it so bad, leave it, breathe it and then own it. And besides that, always follow your dreams. Amito, can you please... And I would like to see how you're walking now. Maybe you should be teaching me how to walk. Oh my God. Can you just show us I don't the know. walk? It's very... Amito um, is wearing a Balenciaga leather dress. dress. Yeah, and uh, Zara shoes. Zara shoes. shoes. Yeah. Can you just... Hmm. Well, it's very simple. It's just... Ta-da! Yay! And then... I beg to... <laughs> Uh, clarification do you like need to have a signature walk yes because sometimes you do need to have a signature walk I'm a bit of a tomboy so I'm kind of like bouncy with my mm -hmm. walk mm -hmm. but my agency did not try to change that because it's the it's the unique thing that's mm -hmm. what our designer would look at and be like oh her walk is kind of cool so like if you look at models like Carly Kloss she has like very she's a ballet dancer so she does that kind of walk mm -hmm. you know different people have different walks and uh, a model like Lara Stone she's very tall but has very tiny feet so always the shoes don't fit her so she's walk she walks like you know it's kind of weird so yeah having a signature walk 
is important, but mm. it doesn't have to be. You know, you don't have to have it. But if you have it, then great. Who is your favorite catwalk model right now? Catwalk model, I love Carly Close's walk. I think she's amazing. She's fantastic with her walk. If you check the YouTube videos, she does really, really well. Yes. That's and one. your walk, of course. <laughs> I don't know about my walk, but <laughs> yeah. Sorry. That is all we had time for today. Remember to follow us on NTV The Style Project or on all our individual Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram handles. Until then, 